and welcome to Sauce to Skin, the show where we look at the journey our ingredients take to get into your favourite Lush product. episode I'm going to be looking at Charity Pot Hand and Body Lotion. Now this product is packed full of nourishing and moisturising ingredients such as olive oil and cocoa butter and also fresh aloe gel. I'd heard about Lush's sourcing of aloe secunda flora from Maasai women groups in Kenya so I'm heading there to have a look at how it's sourced. My first stop was to meet with Joseph, the founder of Lycipia Permaculture Centre and the first Maasai permaculturist. He works closely with the Maasai women on the farming of aloe secundiflora, which is where we get our fresh aloe gel from. So, Jason, talk to me about the difference between aloe vera and aloe secundiflora. Aloe secundiflora is ours. It's indigenous to the land. Aloe secundiflora was almost extinct. But um, when we started training the, the, the women groups about it, its usefulness in making cosmetic products, we thought that we need to put up a nursery to be able to have so many species uh, of aloe and uh, having the aloe planted more than before. A friend of mine told about uh, permaculture, and that gave us a dream that we need to start a project like this, like Hippia Permaculture Center. Permaculture is a sustainable practice for human settlements. We will not have to fight with the nature. We'll have to work with the nature. It was great to see Joseph's passion for permaculture and how it's had such a positive impact on creating a shared sustainable livelihood. So I went to see it in action at the Twala Women's Group. Hello, Priscilla. Hello. Super. Super. It's so lovely to be here in Twala. Thank you for having me. Is it okay to go and have a look around? Yes. Welcome to Twala. Thank you. Priscilla showed me around the Twala Women's Group, where over 200 women work farming aloe, beekeeping, collecting compost, and making traditional Maasai houses. So I know that aloe secundiflora is an endangered species. Does that mean you're limited in how much you can harvest every day? Yes, because it is in indigenous growing here, so they are the one to give the permit for it to be exported. So I can also see in the background here, there is a lot of beehives. What is the connection here, or the relationship with beehives and the aloe secundiflora? We have the beehives here, the women get honey and also the aloe get pollination. Then this, the honey, they increase the yield of the aloe. There are 203 women that work here in Twala. Yes. Where are the men? The men are not here because this is a women project. And these women came together because at home, Maasai women, they own nothing at home. So they decided to get their own project where they will generate income empowerment to their girl child education and also to themselves. We learn from the old women because we have others who have good knowledge, indigenous knowledge, so we learn from each other. After spending the day in the company of the women at Twala Village, I sat down with Rosemary, the leader of the women's group, to find out more about the history of aloe here, the benefits of this ingredient and the challenges that the women face. We started the group so that we can rely on ourselves and also we can preserve a good part of our culture. We grew aloe in 2008, but the first year, 2008, it was eaten by a porcupine. Then we regrow again in 2009 and now it is successfully. So has it taken you a long time to build up such a field here of aloe secundiflora? Yes, it takes us now 10 years. Before the permaculture joined us, we did not know how to make a nursery. How we do harvesting is uh, you just get a, a healthy leaf like this one. The part you cut dries, then when it dries, another one shoots. Okay. Yes. So what about the ones in the middle there? Can you take them from there? We can't because it can make a plant to die. So what have been the most positive changes that have happened here in the community since the aloe has been growing? The women now are not only uh, getting income from the life stock, but they are getting from aloe. So when you give a, a man 12 roots, it's equivalent to one big goat. Aloe is uh, one of uh, the, uh, the activities that change uh, the main perception of saying women cannot be leaders. We are in Lush Manufacturing in Pool and I have with me Ahmed, who is one of the compounders that makes the products. What are we going to be making today? We're going to be making a charity bot, hand and body lotion. So basically what we need to do is to cut the aloe gel. 
all our uh, fresh ingredient, we get it daily fresh. Okay. And it's all be used in the same day. All we need is just a, the gel from the, uh, from the inside. Okay. So it's really soothing for the skin in, it, in its natural form like this anyway. Yes. So now we've added the aloe into the water, what do we need to do now? So now we're going to start to blend it. Okay. The blended aloe is now added to jojoba oil, moringa oil and shea butter. So now we're going to take this muslin off. Yeah. Wow, look nice at that. And gently. And we're going to start to blend it all together. It doesn't look much like a body lotion at the moment, does it? Uh, no, but <laughs> it will be in a minute. So, so now, goes while, in. Yeah, while we mix in, we're going to start to add uh, aloe gel. Yeah. Literally everything we do is uh, handmade, okay. like you just see from the scratch. Yeah and the guys start to label it, yeah. and they take it to the dispatch, and next day it's delivered to our shop. Well, thank you so much for showing me thank how we you. make Charity Pot body lotion today. I'm now gonna go and see it in the shop. So here it is in the shop. That's how it's made. You may have noticed that there are some different labels on the top of these products. So excluding the VAT, Lush donates 100% of all the proceeds of this product to grassroots charities. So not only by buying this product are you able to do your skin good, you're also able to do good too. Join me next time where I have a look at another ingredient and see how that gets from source to skin. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Source to Skin, make sure you click the logo to subscribe and to keep up with all things Lush.